Pace Jordan with Status Quo. The Democratic Party freakout has begun and apparently is staying private as the donors, pundits, and the rest of the hacks won't dare to say most of this publicly uh, that they know they are sinking with the Biden-Harris Titanic. I don't say this with glee. Uh, I certainly am not overjoyed uh, for a uh, return of Donald Trump, but must state the facts. This is from Politico, so uh, take it for what it's worth. Probably just a bunch of pundits and donors leaking what they are too cowardly to say publicly. Uh, so they'll leak it to Politico, but Dems in full freak out over Biden. One advisor to major Democratic donors keeps a running list of reasons Biden could lose. Uh, let me zoom in here. A pervasive sense of fear has settled in at the highest levels of the Democratic Party over Biden's reelection prospects, even among office holders and strategists who had previously expressed confidence about the coming battle with Trump. All year, Democrats had been on a joyless and exhausting grind through the 2024 election. Well, yeah, perhaps joyless and exhausting because, you know, Biden has been uh, issuing a blank check to slaughter and commit genocide of innocent Palestinians, uh, including uh, over the weekend in Rafa, uh, in a tent, tent camp of displaced Palestinians. But now, nearly five months from the election, anxiety has morphed into palpable trepidation, according to more than a dozen party leaders and operatives. And the gap between what Democrats will say on TV or in print and what they'll text their friends has grown has only grown as worries have surged about Biden's prospects. Uh, let me translate that. Sorry to be crass. They are too pussy uh, to say this publicly uh, for fear of, you know, being backbenched in Congress or, you know, not being invited to the DNC holiday party, which will probably happen after Biden loses to a used car salesman, four times indicted former president who tried to launch a coup uh, of the government. Uh, so they'll link this to Politico. Uh, Democrats are always hand rigging, but this seems to be a lot more uh, than that. Quote, you don't want to be the guy who's on the record saying we're doomed or the campaign's bad or Biden's making mistakes. Nobody wants to be that guy or gal, said a Democratic operative in close touch with the White House and granted anonymity to speak freely. But Biden's stubbornly poor polling and the stakes of the election are creating the freak out. Quote, this isn't, oh, my God, Mitt Romney might become president. It's, oh, my God, the democracy might end. Um, sorry to tell these donors, we don't have a democracy because you purchased it and you bought the government. You bought the Democrats and the Republicans. So, hint, hint, we don't have an actual democracy, but we could keep up the facade, i.e. the United Corporations of America. By the way, get your United Corporations of America gear in the status quo store so you could show up at the beach or wherever. This summer, rocking the status quo swag and letting people know we live in the United Corporations of America. It's a good conversation starter, too. Let's get back to this. Despite everything, Trump is running ahead of Biden in most battleground states. He raised far more money in April, and the landscape may only become far uh, become worse for Democrats. With Trump's hush money trial concluding and another, this one involving the president's son set to begin in Delaware, the concern has metastasized in recent days as Trump jaunted to some of the country's most liberal territories, including New Jersey and New York, to woo Hispanic and black voters as he boasted improbably that he could win in those areas. Uh, we covered one of those uh, last week where Trump was in the Bronx uh, speaking to a largely Hispanic community. Uh, let's drop in part of that. Trump stated that he's going to be a dictator on day one. Oh, my God. Are you, are you oh, my God. That? What propaganda? How can the world? He he's said, a capitalist. He he's, a, he's a Democrat, really. You know, he grew up as a Democrat. He believes in the republic. How could you possibly think he's going to be a dictator? We had four years of him. Was he a dictator? No. He, you know, he provided a very good life for the, for the American citizen. How could, I mean, that's like stupidity. People that don't really understand and you know, I mean, and then they call him a Nazi. I mean, well, let's be real. We have real, we have real dictators in the Middle East. Okay. While he's long lagged Biden's cash on hand, Trump's fundraising outpaced the president by 25 million last month and included a record-setting 50.5 million haul from an event in Palm Beach, Florida. 
one advisor to major Democratic Party donors provided a running list that has been shared with funders of nearly two dozen reasons why Biden could lose, ranging from immigration and high inflation to the president's age, the unpopular unpopularity of Vice President Harris and the presence of third party candidates like RFK. Quote, donors asked me on an hourly basis about what I think, the advisor said, calling it, quote, so much easier to show them. So while they read it, I could pour a drink. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you imagine? These poor sexist shit pouring their, you know, champagne or uh, Merlot or Cabernet as the donors read the long list of reasons Biden can lose. Oh, just imagine that image of the limousine liberals. Uh, the advisor said uh, the list of why we could win is so small, I don't even need to keep the list on my phone. On the day after news broke that Biden had trailed Trump in fundraising last month, Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey raised the pressure on donors as she introduced the president to a crowd of 300. The cluster of fundraising events Biden attended in Boston that day were expected to bring in more than $6 million for his political operation, i.e. legalized bribery. But Healey said that wasn't good enough. Quote, to those of you who opened your wallets, thank you, said the Massachusetts governor, a Democrat in her first term. Quote, we'd like you to open them up a little bit more and to find more patriots. Oh, that's what they're calling the donors. More patriots who believe in this country, who recognize and understand the challenge presented at this time. I'd like to make a point. You know, let's pause from our you know media propaganda about democracy being at stake. How normalized our corruption in America is that a media outlet would just, with no emotion, with no commentary, just state a quote, six, raising six million from the plutocrats in one day, that's not enough. And just put out a quote from the Massachusetts governor, supposedly a liberal, um, stating we need more of you patriots to funnel us cash so we could outspend the four-time indicted, also corrupt Republican. And then once Biden is reelected, we'll give back to you patriots in the form of abandoning our promises, the few promises to the working class. Remember, Biden ran on raising the minimum wage. Have you heard that recently? Abandon that within five minutes. Blame the parliamentarian. Uh, he ran on a public option. I haven't heard that since he's been president. His great Democrats' big plan to expand health care during COVID was expanding COBRA, one of the biggest privatized health care scams in, in the world. Uh, he ran on ending drilling on public lands. He's doubled it. I mean, I could $2,000 checks. That became $1,400 checks and a slap in the ass. We could go on and on. But if you patriots, i.e. the donors, live in the United Corporations of America, if you just give us a little more patriotism, i.e. dilute us, hoard, tsunami, inundate us with your cash, we will take care of you patriots. Well, that didn't really work out for Hillary Clinton in 2016. She outspent Trump two to one by a two to one margin. Uh, and she still lost to Trump in 2016. And I'm getting 2016 vibes uh, of this election. I think it possibly could have been uh, different if Trump, one of his more serious criminal trials, uh, not you know the porn star thing that has been 24-7 on CNN and Fox News for the last three weeks. Uh, that verdict might come by the end of this week, but I don't really think this is going to move the needle. I think a January 6th trial or the case which is most serious, and if there was actual justice in America, Trump would be in prison already for this, stealing classified documents, nuclear secrets, et cetera, and then trying to hide them as the Department of Justice and FBI came to Mar-a-Lago to retrieve them. Um, if th either of those would have come before the election, I think Trump would be in serious jeopardy uh, because both of those crimes are very serious. Uh, but he has managed with his money to delay, delay, delay and got favorable treatment in one case from a judge he appointed in Florida to delay these cases past the election. So, I mean, Dems have Democrats have real reason to freak out. Uh, and a lot of this is Biden's doing. I don't want to make this, draw this into purely political terms because this is a moral outrage. But yeah, when you continue funding this, which this was over the weekend, another 
mistake, which is a joke, uh, bombing a tent camp of refugees in Rafa, when you continue funding this, enabling this, yeah, you're going to lose because the majority of Americans, not just hardcore lefties, not just Arab Americans, polls show the majority of Americans are against what Israel and how Israel is responding to October 7th. This was the horrifying scenes over the weekend as Israel mistakenly, air quotes, bombed another refugee camp of displaced Palestinians. Uh, the latest numbers are uh, Israeli army killed 46, 46 Palestinians uh, in the last 24 hours in Rafah, uh, and 110 were injured. Israel's army continues to pound the southern city uh, and bombed a tent camp, displacing Palestinians, a housing displaced Palestinians in a designated safe zone, and that killed 45 people. You don't mistakenly bomb a tent camp with refugees and displaced Palestinians. That's not a mistake. Just like you don't mistakenly bomb uh, car caravans traveling, uh, carrying aid, marked aid, carrying Chef Jose Andres's uh, volunteer workers. That freaked out Nancy Pelosi and the limousine liberals. That you know, killing someone in their circle, not Jose Andres, but his staff at the food, his food organization. That was a their red line when you affect or harm or kill people in our class. I think Nancy Pelosi at one point called for Chef Andres to get some, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize or something like that. But Biden, in response to this atrocity, this genocide, is looking into whether this crossed his red line, which is a joke. There is no line. Biden is going to continue to fund this genocide indefinitely, seemingly knowing it might cost him his presidency because his calculus is if he actually pulled funding, which at this point I, I think it's even too late, even if he pulled funding completely, I think he is lost permanently the majority of Arab American voters, particularly in the critical state of Michigan who are concentrated in Dearborn. I think he has lost the majority of younger voters who are already leaving him before October 7th over inflation, his abandonment of canceling student loan debts, uh, his abandonment of raising the minimum wage, his broken promises on the climate inferno. I could go on. I don't think those people are coming back to him. Uh, it doesn't matter how many fundraising emails the DNC sends. It doesn't matter how many guilt trips James Carville and the rest of the Democratic Party pundit industrial complex tries to you know, place a guilt trip on younger voters. I think he's losing independent voters. And the polls show he's even losing black and Hispanic voters to Trump. And putting aside the indictments and all that, which should be enough for a viable, breathing, non-corrupt, non genocide enabler to defeat Trump. There's enough bad with Trump that you should be able to defeat Trump. His policies are horrendous. His policies are not going to help working class people. Americans gravitating to Trump right now are having short term amnesia because they're remembering, oh, well, we didn't have inflation, this and that, which, to be fair, was not completely Biden's fault. It is his fault. There are things he could have done to bring down inflation quicker that he did not do because he doesn't want to reprimand corporate America because corporate America owns him. But Trump is a very defeatable candidate, but Biden would rather risk defeat to enable a genocide because most of his bigger, biggest donors are wealthy, wealthy Zionists who will pull funding if he actually does the right thing on Israel. It, it's as simple as that. But don't blame us. Don't blame the left. Don't blame Bernie. Don't blame the squad, whatever's left of it. 
don't blame the, the pro-Palestinian protesters. Uh, right now, the reports are there's a damn freak out, and it's not us. It's Biden causing it.